What are some web-based challenges you're seeing and how have organizations overcome them? So clearly many challenges related to COVID, um, obviously um, accessing and occupying space, cleaning, et cetera. We could talk about those for you know, quite some time, but um, you know, focusing on more sustaining challenges related to the next normal. I think so, you know, most organizations have solved the immediate challenge of supporting a fully remote workforce in the immediate or the short term. Um, they're sort of surviving. Um, so they have to overcome the challenge of, you know, kind of maintaining operations. Um, and I think everybody has done that relatively well. The question is, what does the next normal look like? Um, how much space do they need? How will they utilize their space? Uh, these are some of the sort of immediate challenges we're helping them address, you know, for the longer term. Um, you know, likely it won't look the same, people won't operate in the same way, and we really need to prepare for, you know, kind of that long-term operational structure. Um, in every case, technology is part of the answer. So, you know, data is key to making informed decisions around what the future portfolio should be. Um, and then some version or percentage of remote or virtual work is here to stay, I think, for most people. Um, and so what technologies enable employees to work where and how they're most productive, um, you know, is also something that we're, we're looking at. What are the most important policies, procedures, and technologies that organizations need to consider as they look towards what we're calling this uh, new normal? Yeah, well, that's an excellent question. Uh, thank you. I think, you know, in many cases, the, the new normal um, is a major shift for almost all organizations. And, you know, so policies around telework, uh, technology, uh, performance management, uh, labor relations, um, these are all top of mind for organizations. And so, you know, if you think around telework, Right, so we just saw in the poll that mobility is here to stay. Okay, so mobility technologies mean that people are gonna be un, you know, un, unchained from their tasks, right? They'll be able to work anywhere. That's having workplace implications, which we'll talk about today, I'm sure. Um, but from a telework perspective, right? How do you, how do you think through um, who teleworks and uh, who needs to collaborate with who in the office, right? It's easy to say two days a week, but you don't change your footprint at all if that's a random two days a week, right? So how do you know who's going to need the space? So there's policies around teleworking, who teleworks and um, I'll get to technology in a second. Uh, performance management is something we are seeing uh, need to be overhauled. Um, uh, through the pandemic. So, right, how do you manage a remote workforce? How do you make sure they're productive? Um, what are their performance uh, requirements? Um, and do those have to be updated? Um, so there's there are changes there from a human capital perspective. And then bargaining unit employees, bargaining units um, you know, oftentimes in public sector space, but commercial also, um, you know, dictate uh, what, you know, what space people are entitled to have. And, you know, that can really hamstring your uh, portfolio optimization efforts. And so that's something that is being addressed. And from a technology perspective, um, there are multiple perspectives on, uh, uh, technology, they're all undergoing transformation. So mobility technologies, um, you know, fixing the patchwork approach that organizations implemented going into COVID and being more thoughtful about the technology ecosystem uh, and how people use technologies to collaborate and communicate most effectively. Um, and then of course, you know, really important to this audience, the workplace technology. Um, you know, so better managing the workplace through technology, getting insights into the data, you know, reservation, space management, utilization insights, um, those are all being uh, overhauled as well. Thanks, Patrick. That's, that's a really uh, thorough answer. Brian, um, any further thoughts? 
Yeah, this is a this is a really great question. We could probably have an entire webcast just on this um, <laughs> because it's multi-part. I, I really think, uh, you know, part of my answer is that it's important to have policies and procedures. And if you go back to my the first question that I answered earlier, really, I think employees and visitors to our facilities are going to want to know that there's policies and procedures in effect so that they can have a certain level of understanding of how to act once they do come back into the office and begin to do things such as collaborate, uh, et cetera. Uh, knowing that we have their 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 health and wellness um, top of mind as an organization, and then communicating that very clearly so that everyone knows that there are policies and procedures. And when you link that to technologies, there's a real growth, especially around the internet of things and technologies that we're bringing into the workplace that do things such as measure real-time utilization uh, and interaction amongst employees, indoor air quality monitoring, all of these, the ability to be able to count people going in and out, the, the ability to be able to do deep analysis of how our facilities are being used. You know, I think a lot of people are gonna have questions around things like privacy data, you know, and uh, whether or not I'm anonymous um, as uh, these things are being put into place to help us better understand how people are, are collaborating, but also how well our facilities are being utilized. And maybe <clears throat> we make changes to our facilities to provide more collaborative space. How well are they performing? All of those can have implications around policies uh, and procedures and communicating very clearly to your employees and visitors what that means to them. Um, you know, you might want to let them know that, yeah, we are counting who comes in and out so that we can do things such as manage congestion on a floor, but also we're doing this in an, an, an anonymous fashion and no way are we going to be sharing that information. I think this kind of communication and connecting policies and technology and then communicating out to the users of our facilities is absolutely critical as another step into, you know, what I was saying earlier, really focusing on employee sentiment and making feel making everyone feel as comfortable as possible as we all begin to come back together.